Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Cells as the Basis of Life. This is video number five and we're going to be looking at biological drawings. So one of the things that we need to do in our continued look at the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and the variety of organisms that are represented by both of those groups is to draw scaled diagrams of different types of cells. So there's a couple of important um, terms here is firstly scaled diagram. So we need some idea of size and also a variety. So making sure you look at a lot of different types of cells as you're going through this exercise. Now biological drawing is different to artistic drawing. What we're trying to look for is uh, simplicity as well as accuracy. It's not necessary that um, biological drawings would end up uh, being displayed on walls, although some of them are certainly of a high enough quality to, to be so. Um, we're not trying to add three dimensions. We're looking very much at two dimensions. We don't use um, shading uh, or, or shadowing effects. Sometimes we do use a stippling effect and that's just um, a technique to get used to. But it's very much about being clear and being accurate in our drawing so that whatever we're looking at as a drawing is something we could easily then pick up when we look uh, through a microscope slide or we look at a particular organism um, in, it, in its um, natural state. It does require a little bit of practice because it's a different type of drawing and there's also a few rules which I'll um, identify on the next slide. The thing with technology and particularly computers and phones is that they've replaced so much of what we um, used to need to do in terms of imaging and certainly when someone like uh, Charles Darwin was on the uh, Beagle uh, during his voyage around to, to gather information um, that's uh, assisted him in his um, ideas. He had no computer to go around with. He had no mobile phone to take photos, um, to keep track of dates and times and, and locations so that he knew where he was when he took each of these. He had to record them all meticulously and he had to draw accurately in order to help him remember which uh, specimens were which and which were collected from where. That legacy remains and so we still at times do uh, practice this skill of biological drawing and it is one thing that is important for you to pick up as you go through this course. Most of the drawing that we'll be looking at will be doing through a microscope. Sometimes we might project that onto a screen, but most of the time it'll be stuff that you're doing yourself, looking through the microscope, looking at a range of different types of cells, and either drawing map structures if you see lots of cells together forming tissues, uh, or drawing individual cells rather than trying to draw a hundred individual cells that are part of a wider structure. The importance of being able to communicate through biological drawings is extremely important for scientists and biologists in particular. And so there are, as I said, a couple of rules that we need to be aware of. So let's have a quick look at these now. It's important that, especially in examinations as well, that you take in with you a pencil, probably a couple, just in case one has broken leads, um, and a sharpener. You can make sure that you keep that pencil nice and sharp so it's got a good sharp point. Labels are critically important around your diagram and they should be pretty much consistently um, uh, parallel. So you can see this one's off at a little bit of an angle here, um, but the rest of them are nice horizontal lines, nice and clear, pointing directly to a structure so that there's no ambiguity. There's no, oh, I'm not really sure what that's pointing at. You can see exactly what each thing is pointing to and therefore it makes it easier to identify what it is that you're looking at. Um, as with all diagrams, you need to include a title. Um, the titles are very important um, because it tells us a little bit about what it is that, that we're looking at. Size is also important. Now, size is important for two reasons. Size is important in terms of scale. And it's also absolutely important because if you draw your diagrams too small, then you will lose detail and we can't actually see what's going on inside each of the cells. Conversely, if you draw them too big, you're going to end up taking pages and pages of stuff and you're going to have to try and figure out how to put the detail into these massive diagrams. So you want them to be accurate, but you want them to be in good proportions, sufficiently large to show all detail. Two dimensions is sufficient. And as I said, we try and avoid shading. We're not into um, lights and darks and, and shadows and 
giving a sense of three dimensionality. Of course, that does make things a little bit difficult because when you are looking at cells, cells aren't a, a cut through. They are little boxes or spheres. And so they do have a three dimensional structure. But it's important that when we're trying to show what we're looking at, that we make sure that we focus in just on that, like a, a cut surface that just shows that flat um, surface that we're seeing. The labels need to be neat and tidy. They should have horizontal lines and they should be very clearly labeled. And very importantly, we need to make sure that we have some scale that tells us the size of the cells that we're looking at. So that can include the magnification, tells you how many times uh, magnified the um, cell is. So you want to um, have a look at the microscope, look at the objective lens and the eyepiece lens that you're looking at so you can work out the total magnification of the structure that you're looking at and also when you're drawing it to get a sense of how big those cells actually are and we'll do some exercises uh, in class with the microscope to help you do that. Um, you obviously will include any structures that you can see and or identify. Some structures may be too small and so obviously you don't have to identify them. But also if you, uh, if you think about uh, a plant that has a stem like this, we can actually take a scalpel and cut it long ways. Uh, so we would open it up. That would be a longitudinal section, which is basically cutting down the long um, part of the stem, but we could also take a slice across um, the stem and that would be a transverse section. The transverse section goes across and the longitudinal section goes down. Because you will see different things depending on which of those you use, it's also important that you use those um, uh, shortcuts in order to identify whether you have produced a transverse section or a longitudinal section and that's going to be particularly imp important when you're producing your own slides, your own um, microscope slides at some point in the future. This does take practice and it is something that we'll be doing a little bit of in class so hopefully we'll get a little bit of practice at biological drawings and continue to improve. Thanks for watching.